Okay, good morning, and welcome to Matins on this Tuesday of the fourth week of Pentecost. Uh, today we'll be using Psalm 146, and we'll be reading from Ecclesiastes chapter 8, and we continue in Galatians chapter 4. Uh, but before we get into that, it's always appropriate to take a moment and center ourselves and prepare to come into God's presence. So let's do that, shall we? O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall declare your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. Give glory to God, our light and our life. O come, let us worship him. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth. The heights of the hills are also his. The sea is his for he made it and his hands have molded the dry land. O come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord our maker. For he is our God and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Psalm 146 Hallelujah! Praise the Lord, O my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God while I have my being. Put not your trust in rulers, nor in any child of earth, for there is no help in them. When they breathe their last, they return to earth, and in that day their thoughts perish. Happy are they who have the God of Jacob for their help, whose hope is in the Lord their God, who made heaven and earth, the seas and all that is in them, who keeps his promise forever who gives justice to those who are oppressed and food to those who hunger. The Lord sets the prisoners free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord cares for the stranger. He sustains the orphan and widow, but frustrates the way of the wicked. The Lord shall reign forever. Your God, O Zion, throughout all generations, Hallelujah. Let us pray. God of glory and power, happy indeed are those who have put their trust in you. Shine the brightness of your light upon us, that we may love you always with a pure heart and praise you forever. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Okay. So... So we're going to start in Ecclesiastes chapter 8. We'll start at verse 14 and we'll go just a few verses into chapter 9. There is a vanity which takes place on earth, that there are righteous men to whom it happens according to the deeds of the wicked, and there are wicked men to whom it happens according to the deeds of the righteous. I said that this also is vanity. And I commend enjoyment, for man has no good thing under the sun but to eat and drink and enjoy himself, for this will go with him in his toil through the days of life which God gives him under the sun. When I applied my mind to know wisdom and to see the business that is done on earth, how neither day nor night one's eyes see sleep, then I saw all the work of God, that man cannot find out the work that is done under the sun. However much man may toil in seeking, he will not find it out. 
even though a wise man claims to know, he cannot find it out. But all this I laid to heart, examining it all, how the righteous and the wise and their deeds are in the hand of God. Whether it is love or hate, man does not know. Everything before them is vanity, since one fate comes to all, to the righteous and the wicked, to the good and the evil, to the clean and the unclean, to him who sacrifices and him who does not sacrifice. As is the good man, so is the sinner. And he who swears is as he who shuns an oath. This is an evil in all that is done under the sun, that one fate comes to all. Also, the hearts of men are full of evil, and madness is in their hearts while they live. And after that they go to the dead. But he who is joined with all the living has hope, for a living dog is better than a dead lion. For the living know that they will die. But the dead know nothing, and they have no more reward, for the memory of them is lost. Their love and their hate and their envy have already perished, and they have no more forever any share in all that is done under the sun. Go, eat your bread with enjoyment, drink your wine with a merry heart, for God has already approved what you do. Let your garments always be white, white. Let not oil be lacking on your head. Enjoy life with the wife whom you love, all the days of your vain life which he has given you under the sun, because that is your portion in life and in your toil at which you toil under the sun. Whatever your hand finds to do, do it with your might, for there is no work or thought, or knowledge, or wisdom in Sheol, to which you are going. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Galatians chapter 4. We begin at verse 21. Tell me, you who desire to be under law, do you not hear the law? For it is written that Abraham had two sons, one by a slave and one by a free woman. But the son of the slave was born according to the flesh, the son of the free woman through promise. Now this is an allegory. These women are two covenants. One is from Mount Sinai, bearing children for slavery. She is Hagar. Now Hagar is Mount Sinai in Arabia. She corresponds to the present Jerusalem, for she is in slavery with her children. But the Jerusalem above is free, and she is our mother, for it is written, Rejoice, O barren one who does not bear. Break forth and shout, you who are not in travail, for the children of the desolate one are many more than the children of her that is married. Now we, brethren, like Isaac, are children of promise. But as at that time... He who was born according to the flesh persecuted him who was born according to the Spirit. So it is now. But what does the scripture say? Cast out the slave and her son, for the son of the slave shall not inherit with the son of the free woman. So, brethren, we are not children of the slave, but of the free woman. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In many and various ways, God spoke to his people of old by the prophets. But now, in these last days, he has spoken to us by his Son. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. 
You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Let us pray. O God, from whom all good proceeds, grant that by your inspiration we may think those things that are right, and by your merciful guiding may, may do them. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Okay. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy and hear us. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy and hear us. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy and hear us. Let us confess our faith using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. <clears throat> o Lord, almighty and everlasting God, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power, that we may not fall into sin, nor be overcome in adversity, and in all we do, Direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Okay. <clears throat> so Ecclesiastes is, he's nothing if not consistent, right? Um <laughs> This is more that everything we do is vain. It's uh, not worth not worth pursuing, right? So, um, and we all have the same end, whether you're good or evil, uh, clean or unclean, righteous or wicked. Since one fate comes to all, right? As is the good man, so is the sinner. And now this is interesting. This is an evil in all that is done under the sun, that one fate comes to all. This is evil. 
Now, is he calling God evil? No, he's not calling God evil. What he's saying is, um, this is a result of sin. If we had not sinned, if, if Adam and Eve had not sinned, they would have remained in paradise with God and had access to the tree of life. They would not have experienced death. <clears throat> so the fact that all human beings die now, it's evil. The hearts of men are full of evil, and madness is in their hearts while they live, and after that they go to the dead. The hearts of men are full of evil. Now, well, that's not far from Romans 3, right? Romans 3, 23, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. He who is joined with all the living has hope. How are we joined with the living? No. Part of that is being joined with the living God, understanding that we are his children and that we are all his children. The living know that they will die. Now, why is that important? Well, if you know that you are alive and that your life is temporary, you will treat it as precious. The dead know nothing. They have no more reward. When you're dead, you don't know anything. <laughs> when you're dead, you're dead. Um, they, how, does that, how does that sentence finish? They have no more reward, but the memory of them is lost. Their love and their hate and their envy have already perished. They have no more forever any share in all that is done under the sun. Hmm. So he comes back to go and eat your bread with enjoyment and drink your wine with a merry heart. Enjoy yourself. And let your garments always be white. Stay clean, stay pure. Um, yeah, so he is, he is consistent. He keeps the message going. So let's spend, let's spend a, the bulk of our time on Galatians, shall we? So this is, this is really a deep verse, a, a deep passage, okay? So when Abraham was first called by God, he was already 85 years old, and, and at, that, at that point he was still Abram, and Sarah was Sarai, right? And Sarai had never had any children. She was unable to bear. She was barren. And so she told Abraham, and she regretted it later, to have a child with, with the slave Hagar. And that was the birth of Ishmael, right? And Sarah then regretted it. She hated it. She hated Ishmael. She hated Hagar. She was sorry that she made that happen, but they were so desperate for an heir to, uh, to carry on Abraham's legacy. They decided to use the slave woman for that. And it was just bad all around. It, everything was miserable. Hagar ended up having to flee with her baby to escape the wrath of Sarah. But God made good on his promise. <clears throat> God made good on his promise. And if you remember, God sent a messenger and told Sarah, and she laughed. She didn't think it was possible, because I think at that point, by the time she actually did have a baby, she was almost, well, Abraham was 100 by that point, I think. <laughs> it's just, can you imagine being 80 years old and finally having a baby? Whew. Anyway. So it's no wonder that Sarah laughed. She didn't think it was possible. So once she did, Isaac became, he was the next in line. He was the, the, the son who was promised. That's why it was so fascinating that Abraham would be willing to sacrifice him for his faith. He said, well, you know, God gave him to me, and if God wants him back, I'll give him back to him. Wow. Anyway, okay, so 
there's a there's a big issue of faith and promise here. Abram and Sarah took matters into their own hands when they decided to have a baby with Abraham and Hagar. Abram had already been promised that God would provide for him an heir and descendants as numerous as the stars of the sky and the sands of the earth. You know, I, And they didn't see it happening. They ran out of patience. And they decided, well, let's let's try this slave woman. See if see if we can have a baby that way. And she continued to be a slave, as did Ishmael. Never had the love of, of Sarah. And not really sure. I'd have to go back and look again. I'm, it doesn't really say a lot about how how Abraham felt about Ishmael, but he was still a slave child, not really the son of Abraham's wife, so not born in love, born in slavery. But Isaac, when Isaac was finally born, he was the product of a promise, of God's promise. He was the fulfillment of that promise. When God said, I will give you Abraham an heir, I will give you a son, and it came true. It didn't come true when Abraham and Sarah wanted it to come true, but it came true. But as at the, that time, he who was born according to the flesh, Ishmael, persecuted him who was born according to the Spirit, Isaac, so it is now. Okay? So how does that happen? Well, have you talked to anybody who doesn't believe lately? I, just, I saw something, there was an argument on Facebook yesterday, someone that I know, and people were commenting on the post, and I don't even remember what it was, but someone someone cited their faith in scripture and the other person said come on you're an adult you're old enough you don't have to believe in myths anymore now that's pretty mild that's pretty mild but this is what the children of the world if you want to call them that this is what they do it's not enough it's not enough that um they don't believe they have to they have to try and and cause doubt and win Christians over and make them doubt their faith and, and try to turn them into atheists too. At least give them enough doubt that, that they begin to question what they believe. Why do you think that is? I think it goes back to we're all created with a God-shaped hole, and when we try to fill it with anything but God, we feel incomplete. Well, misery loves company, right? And when people start to think that they know better than God, that they don't need God anymore, that they fall prey to the lies of the wicked foe, they want other people to join them in their misery. It's a sickness. It's a sickness and it spreads. So, we know that God makes good on his promises, and Abraham is a perfect example. Abraham has realized in the birth of his son Isaac that nothing is beyond God's power. Abraham was old enough before he met God that he figured he would never have any children. He and Sarah were just going to live out their days, and that was it. God made a promise to him, because God knew that Abraham would be a man of faith. And he proved that that's who he was. And so God used him to build his legacy of promise. And he gave him a son. And that son 
produced more sons, Esau and Jacob. Jacob became Israel, and the legacy continued, just as God said it would. Abraham was only one man, and Isaac was only one man, but they, through them, God made promises to his people. He made a covenant, and God showed his own faithfulness to his children. And Paul says here, Now we, brethren, like Isaac, are children of promise. And we have a different covenant than Abraham did. We have the baptismal covenant. We have the covenant, the new covenant given to us by the Messiah, Jesus Christ. And thankfully, that covenant is open to everyone, not just those who were born of the house of David. What does the scripture say? Cast out the slave and her son, for the son of the slave shall not inherit with the son of the free woman. So, brethren, we are not children of the slave, but of the free woman. We are. We are children of the promise. And that promise was made to us by the God who keeps his promises. And Thanks be to God for that. That is who God is. <clears throat> let's, uh, let's pray about that, shall we? O oh God, for our redemption, you gave your only Son to suffer death on the cross. And by his glorious resurrection, you delivered us from the power of death. Make us die every day to sin, so that we may rise to live with Christ forever, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now may the Lord Almighty bless us and direct our days and our deeds in his peace. Amen. Okay, that concludes our matins for today. Thank you for joining me and for getting your day started with God. I'm, I'm glad that we can continue to do this. So please continue to be in prayer. There remains much to pray about. Um, continue to be in the scriptures. Um, there's a, a lot that God has to teach us and a lot that we need to learn. And uh, I think right now more than ever, we have got to know what the book says. We have got to know what God's Word has to tell us. Life is crazy. It's crazy right now. And I think God's Word is the best anchor we could have. So I hope you will, con you will join me in continuing to study His Word and to meditate on it. And I hope, if you have questions, that you're comfortable sending them to me and maybe we can find those answers together because I still have questions. I'm still learning. So, but I'm happy to share that learning with you and uh, we can be on this journey together because that's what God wants. So until we can do this again, and we'll do it soon, may God bless and keep you.